Hello, my name is Sue Lewis and I'm going to be running you through this session, which is end of year 12. And it's showing you all the different choices that are available to you post, eight, post 18. So just before we get started, um, have a look at these things, which are really values, things that are important to you and maybe drive what you're interested in. Have a little think about the three that you think are most important to you. Okay, so this activity, I put it there to just show you that if you know what drives you, your values, that can really help you to think about a course or a career. It's going to fit with what's really important to you. And that's really important if you're going to be in work for many years to come. It's really good to try to find something that clicks with the things you're particularly passionate about. So it's important that you become a manager of your career, but it's important to use all the available help that can be provided through school, your family, etc. So I'm just going to show you a short video that we developed with some Year 12 students, in fact, that kind of explains why careers is important and what you could be doing to help yourself. Imagine your life in 10 years' time. Are you being driven to work in your electric car? Eating meatless burgers for lunch with robots cleaning your home? Technology is changing jobs. In 10 years, there'll be lots of new jobs while others will change or simply disappear. You're likely to be in work for 50 years and have at least 10 different jobs by the time you're 42. Seem like a long way off? A happy future starts with some of the decisions you take in the next few years. So to get ready for careers, what should you be doing now? Firstly, know yourself. You are unique. You have likes, dislikes, strengths, qualities, and things you value that are important to you. These things can help you identify a future career. You have skills too, from school, hobbies, work, or volunteering. Imagine you are learning something new, like photography or rock climbing. You will use a range of different skills. Many of these are transferable, skills that you can take from one job to another. Employers love these. The second thing you can do is do stuff. Trying out new stuff makes you feel good about yourself and builds transferable skills. For example, you may or may not pass your driving test first time. It doesn't matter. Learning new things develops transferable skills and increases your ability to bounce back and keep trying. That's called resilience. Skills can lead to part-time jobs, useful cash and jobs in the future. You can also talk about these skills on job applications and in interviews. So you know what you like and you're good at. You're trying new things and building skills and experiences. What else can you do? The third thing you can do is to make sure you know all your options. Do you know what qualification and grades you need? Will the course or training help you on your journey? Which option would be best for you? And if your plan A looks watertight, always have a plan B and even a plan C just in case. The fourth thing is to make sure you use your supporters. Teachers, family, friends and coaches know you well They'll help you identify your strengths, skills and interests and help you on your way. If you can, grab a chance to talk to a careers advisor. You'll get individual help with your plan. They're professionally trained and have loads of up-to-date information. They'll listen to you, inspire you and help you create a plan for the future. And there's Career Pilot too. A free website with all the careers information in one place showing you all your options, including information on jobs, courses and lots more. Use the career tools to find out more about you and save all of this in one place to share with your supporters. So to get ready for careers, what should you be doing now? Know yourself. Do stuff and develop your skills. Make sure you know all your options. Use your supporters. Your future starts now. Get ready.
So hopefully you've got an idea from that short video about why careers is important and what you can do. And I'm just going to show you now how you can use Career Pilot, which is mentioned in the video, in order to help you know more about yourself and actually think about your future career. So in Career Pilot, there's a whole section called Start With You, and that will help you know more about the things that are particularly important to you. So here's some activities you could do. You could start with a subject you love and think and see where it might lead. We give you examples of jobs and courses. You can start with your values and see where your values could lead, what companies might be worth uh, working with because they connect to the things you're interested in. You could do your skills profile, so you can find out about your skills, or you could plot your qualifications on a ladder. Some of these things you might have done before, if you've used Career Palace, you could just update the things you're interested in, because things might have changed since the last time. So just to show you a few of those things, start with a subject, you can click on a subject you really like, and then you get ideas about jobs or courses that that subject could lead on to, just to give you a flavour, really, of the different things. You could do our skills profile and find, uh, and we'll ask you what you've done in your life for your learning or your work. So for everything you tick, um, you can find out what skills that has helped you develop. And all those skills that the quiz is picking up on through asking you the questions will be put in our skills bank. And the idea is you add your own examples. So it might be things you're doing in your leisure time or as part of school. Just add a record in say what skills is given you, and then all be added in alongside the skills from the quiz. You can also compare your skills to the skills required in a job, so you could put the name of a job, so it could be teacher, plumber, dentist, whatever it might be, and you'll find out what skills that job requires, and you can see yours alongside that, so it could help you to think about what else you need to develop too. When you come to apply, you can use my skills to apply, say we're applying to, think about the skills you most need to flag up if you're going to be a nurse, for example, and then you'll get all your examples that you can use. So in terms of doing stuff, we obviously it's really important that you focus on your A-levels and your BTECs in year 12. But don't forget all the other things you could be doing as well. And we know it's been tricky with COVID, but you might be able to do something, some of these things online. It's all about having things you could talk about on your CV or your personal statement. So knowing all your options, that's the focus of today's session. You will get some time on Career Pilot to explore them. I'm just going to remind you of what the options are. So in this country, in England, we have three pathways, academic, A-levels are in that category, vocational, which is where you do a course of related to a job area, work-based, where you've been trained to do that particular job in a working environment. We have different levels of qualifications. You'll be working at, you will have done your GCSE, so you'll either have qualifications at level one or level two from your GCSEs, and now you're working probably at level three, where you might be doing A-levels or a vocational course, like a BTEC, or an advanced apprenticeship. They're all level three qualifications. And you can see level four is the first year of university, uh, degree year one. And there's other things you could do through the vocational pathway that are at the same level, foundation degrees, higher nas national certificates, and there's also higher degrees, higher apprenticeships or degree apprenticeships too. So the second year will give you a level five qualification. And the third year is where you get your degree. Sometimes it takes a bit longer through the apprenticeship pathway, but when you get up to level six, that's when you get your degree. And there's other levels above that if you want to go further later. So this is kind of what you decided now. You're either moving from level two to three or three to four. So what are the options? Uh, well, there's a range of different pathways. You could do a degree at a university. You can also do a degree at a college, which we've vocationally focused, but colleges offer a degree program too. And then obviously there's the work-based option, which is be an apprenticeship, or sometimes you get sponsored by an employer to do a degree or to do an apprenticeship and they will pay your fees. So just the differences between them. Uh, academically, if you go through a degree program, it's usually three or four years. If you do it through the college, you do a two-year foundation degree, for example, and then you top up in the third year and you get a degree. And an apprenticeship can be from anything from one to seven years. Depends on the level. You might have to move between the different levels to get up to degree level. 
There are hundreds of courses at universities. You could do combinations of courses like maths and music, for example. If you do it through the college, they tend to be focused on a vocational area um, linked to a job. And if you do it through an apprenticeship, you're often being trained in the workplace in order to do that job. So in terms of money um, for the degree at a university or a college, then there, you can apply for a loan to fund your tuition fees and additional loan for living costs as well. If you do the apprenticeship pathway, then you will get paid. Uh, and it's about £155 a week for about 36 hours, though some employers top it up so it can be more. There are other alternatives too. You could choose to do a gap year employment you might want to go straight into a job after post 18 or you could do a vocational course at a college which is not a degree level it could be a level three so there's lots of different options you can choose so here's a quick quiz for you how do you think you become a nurse do you have to do a degree do you have to do an apprenticeship or could it be either but the answer is you can either do a degree or you can do an apprenticeship. You do need to find an apprenticeship pathway, but more and more hospitals now are offering this pathway. But obviously you can also do it as a degree. What about a dentist? How do you become a dentist? Well, there's only one route to become a dentist. You need to get a degree. There's no apprenticeship in dentistry. What about a solicitor? Well, there are two options. You can now do it as a degree course and you could do a subject degree and then actually you can transfer that into law later if you want to do that. So you could do a history degree and change to law uh, at year four. Or you could do an apprenticeship pathway. It can take longer, but um, there's lo lots of routes now into legal professions through apprenticeships. The key thing you need to do is to just check there is an apprenticeship in the thing you want to do if you're thinking about the apprenticeship pathway. And on Career Pilot, there's an A to Z of the different available apprenticeships. You do need to find apprenticeships, like finding a job. So we have got an apprenticeship search on Career Pilot. Just a few things about apprenticeships. They are available at these different levels, starting with level two and going right up to level seven and eight, in fact. You can search for an apprenticeship on Career Pilot or through gov.uk. And if you go to gov.uk, you can register your interests and they will send you alerts if a vacancy becomes available. It's also a good site called Not Going to University, and that has the latest apprenticeships. You can see here that there's a lot of advanced apprenticeships, um, less of higher or degree or intermediate. So you can see a lot are coming in at that level three. There's also a great site called Amazing Apprenticeship, which starts with the employers that are offering the apprenticeship. So you can search for an employer and find out what apprenticeships they're actually offering. So there's lots of different ways to find an apprenticeship vacancy. You do need to bear in mind that if you want to do an apprenticeship, sometimes you have to go sideways. So even if you've got your A-levels, you might have to start again at level three while you're doing an apprenticeship. And that's because you might not have the, the vocational knowledge. So you need to go sideways to learn that before you progress onwards. There is an option sometimes to get an employer to sponsor you. You need to look for these opportunities. Here's a few examples. PwC uh, has got one and the Power Academy has got an engineering one. So find out what they're offering. They will then pay your fees or um, while you're training. But do bear in mind, you know, if you get sponsored by an employer, you're probably going to have to work for them the holidays, for example. Um, but you won't have a big student debt, so that would be the plus. So do check the small print and see where you're committed to. They can be great, but just be aware of that. So if you're thinking about higher education in a college, you could choose to do a foundation degree, which is a two-year course. And in the third year, you top up and you get a degree, just like from anywhere else. I work at the University of Bath and they sponsor some foundation degrees. So if somebody's done a foundation degree through our college and they do the third year, they'll get a degree awarded through the University of Bath. There's also at level four and five, higher national certificate and higher national diploma. And they're all related to job area. But as I said, don't forget in a college, you could go and do a level three course after you've been at school six form, for example, and there's lots of vocational qualifications on offer. So a foundation degree 
and the HSC is quite similar. It's a combination of academic, but also vocational work as well. So it's related to a job area. And here's some of the vocational areas you can choose from. One thing about studying towards a degree in a college is that often they have lower fees than a university and offer the, often the grade requirement is lower than a university. So if you are thinking about university, because that's where a lot of students will go on to at 18, there are thousands of courses you could choose from, over 130 universities. So top tips we would say is there's like two key stages. Decide which course you want to do and then find which universities offer those courses and compare them to decide if that university is for you or if that course is for you. So it can be quite different, different places. So how you can decide what course you've got, where you've got all that information about your values, your interests, your skills, what motivates you. Uh, you can start with a job you want to do and actually if you look at our job profiles, it'll tell you the pathways that you need to choose in order to become uh, employed in that area. Or you can start with the subject you love and see where that might lead, what degrees it might lead on to. Then you need to find a university that offers that course. Look at them in detail because a course, even with the same name, could be quite different in different places. Think about what you've got to offer to that course. So what points are you going to get for the qualifications you're doing? So these are called UCAS tariff points and each qualification grade will give you a certain amount of points. Like if you get an A star, you get 56, for example. You also need to think about accommodation costs, student satisfaction, how, how well the students felt about it. So it is really important to do your research. We do have information about the available degrees with access to the data about student satisfaction, for example. Other things you might want to think about is the other details of what you need to be able to fund if you do go on to university at, uh, and you decide to live away from home, for example. What do you think is the average student rent per week? Well, in 2020, it was £126 a week, but it can vary across the country. Obviously, London would be more expensive and some of the places might be slightly cheaper, so that might be a consideration too. But also check what it includes because you don't really want to be paying for your Wi-Fi or your bills on top. See if you can get a package and uh, that will cover all your bills. If you're thinking about work and training, um, we've got a lot of information. So if you're thinking, I just want to get a job after sixth form, then you could go to our job sectors and under useful links, we've got links to the uh, job search websites related to that job area. So in this case, they're all about animal. So another top tip, if you are thinking about an apprenticeship, but you're also maybe thinking about university, plan A, make that application to university because you're going to have to do that in January. Plan B, look for an apprenticeship after that time, because often the vacancies come after the time you've had to apply to university, because you can all, all, always decline your university place later. All the information about all the pathways is on Career Pilot under your choices are 18, and lots of other places on the site as well. We've also got free online courses where you can actually uh, do a course and that will beef up your knowledge about the subject and that will look really good in your personal statement. Okay, so I've talked a lot. Now it's about you. Time for you to explore your options. So now you're going to go to Career Pilot. You're going to register if you haven't registered before or sign in. If you can't remember your password, do forgotten password. And then you could do some activities in the Start With You section to find out more about your yourself and then some activities in the explore your options section so you can actually look in details of jobs and pathways into them for example so you can have about 25 minutes to do this activity so what you can do now if you're the teacher you can stop the video and come back in 25 minutes time so hopefully you had a good explore the site and you had an opportunity to look at the things you're particularly interested in if we go back to the video, number four was use your supporters. So, you know, there's lots of people who can help you, including your head of six, your teachers, your family, the careers advisor at your school or college, and also career pilot and get back to it any time. 
So we've asked you quite a lot about your options. Now what we want to do is find out what you're thinking about. And you could change this later. It's not fixed. So we're going to get you to do something called the Pathway Planner. And the Pathway Planner is now going to ask you which pathways you're interested in. So it'll show you the pathways you can choose from. You can say whether you're definite, considering, not doing. You have to choose an option for each of the pathways. And then if you're definite or considering, you get to do a quiz where we'll ask you about that pathway to find out what you know and what you've done already. And that will help us to give you a, a how ready my score for that pathway. And the way we'll do that was we'll give you a red, amber, green score. So don't worry if you're red or amber, that's absolutely fine. The reason for doing this is to find out how we can help you. So this student is definitely interested in university, but they're in amber, so there might be some particular things they need help with. They're considering apprenticeship, but they're red, so they probably need quite a bit of support with that. So what we're going to make sure is everybody's going to get a careers guidance session. We're going to send you a time, and the careers advisor will be able to help you with the things that maybe have been flagged up through doing the Pathway Planner. So if you want to do the pathway plan now, it's probably going to take you five to ten minutes. There's a few last slides, so if you're the teacher, if you just make sure you've got two minutes at the end to show the final slides. Great, so hopefully everybody got to do the pathway planner. So just a few wrap-up things. In CareerPath, the third stage of our process is planning next steps. So you can use your report, use the skills map. Um, and there's also a little action planner, so you can write your own little actions about what you're planning to do to take forward your, your career. You can view your full report, which will be here, and that moves up every year. You can print that out, share it with your family, um, or your teachers might be talking to you about it as well. And don't forget you could change things if you've changed your mind. So just to wrap up, a reminder that uh, there's four things you can do to take forward your career, know yourself, do stuff, know all your options and use your supporters. And careerpilot.org.uk is always there to help you too. So good luck with your future plans and thank you so much for listening.